Welcome back to Vampire. We just left Whitechapel after giving everybody their medicine. And just heading over to the main quest right here. Need to reach the Temple Church entrance. I'm not 100% sure why. I know that my main goal, just kind of like generally, is as Lord Redgrave ordered, I need to make Aloysius Dawson my progeny. I need to bite them, turn them into a vampire. But going to the Temple Church doesn't sound like it's related to that. That's not where Aloysius Dawson lives, so I'm not exactly sure why I'm going there. But anyway, before that, um, I just was coming over here, went into the shop, where there's Carolyn Price and Carol Price. I'm just going to keep going to the menu so I don't miss this chance, because remember I wanted to talk to the daughter, Carol Price, but I wasn't able to because they were behind the locked door and there didn't seem to be any way to get in there. And well, there still doesn't seem to be any way to get in there, but they just came out while I was standing here. So let's use this opportunity to talk with them. Remember, we were concerned that they were maybe being abused by their mother. Good evening, Miss Price. I'm Dr. Reed. Do you remember me? Dr. Reed? Yes, of course, you are the doctor who healed me and my mum. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Good to see you too, Carol. Are you all right? Oh, yes. I, I did not hurt myself recently. I know how to take care of myself now. I'm almost a grown-up. Yeah, their mom said that they were they're clumsy all the time. That's extremely suspicious. Oh, right, I wanted to cure them, but I couldn't get to them. Do you need my... Oh. They have anemia. Oh, thank you. Level two, not that I'm going to bite them. Do you enjoy working with your mother? Oh, yes, Doctor. My mother raised me alone after my father died. We've always lived together, and she has always watched over me. I hope you can stay a little longer. Do you remember your father? No, I was just a baby then. My mother always told me how strong and good he was. Don't you think about getting married? Let, that's a weird question. No, I'm not going to ask that. Is it true you often hurt yourself, Carol? Yes, it's true. I try to behave, I really do. But one way or another, I always end up injured or wounded. I'm so stupid. Why would you be stupid? It's like I can't help getting under my mother's feet. That's how I end up being pushed, cut, or, or burned. You see, I'm a stupid girl, really. When exactly do these accidents happen? Ever since I was little. That's why I need to stay with Mum. I'm not capable of taking care of myself. Oh, this is really bad. Why are you awake at night, Carol? I am helping my mother in her shop. It's not easy, but I'm a grown-up now. Why is work not easy? Is something or someone bothering you? Oh no, most people are gentle with me. But, but I'm so nervous sometimes. I, I pay no attention and hurt myself. Good thing my mum learned first aid. What can you tell me of the people living nearby? I don't speak to many people. Except our customers. It's not easy to make friends. And with the epidemic, it's even more difficult. Have you no friends at all? No. Mr. Nithicut used to pass by and was always nice to me. Does he not come by anymore? No. Mum said he was weird. Always reciting poetry about a girl he'd met in Whitechapel. I wonder who this Camellia may be. I've met them, both the poet and Camellia. What can you tell me about the epidemic? Some of our regular customers have left London. Some others only send their housemaids now. Everybody fears the contagion. I've even seen men with weapons. Have you ever met the famous Aloysius Dawson? Yes. A very strange man. Not very nice. What do you mean? He said he was ready to pay good money for rare books. And then laughed at what we showed him. Goodbye, Carol. I'm I sorry, I, I, I can't help you, sir. We need to have a conversation. Talk with someone else Good evening, Miss Price. You know you can call me Carolyn, my dear doctor. Let's get this out of the way first. 
Do you know Aloysius Dawson? Everybody knows him. He's only been to my shop once, though, looking for rare books and other intriguing antiques. Did he buy something from you? No, he left quickly. He almost laughed at my goods. Mr. Dawson may be a rich man, but you can't buy good manners. But isn't Aloysius Dawson known for his philanthropy? That was before his brother Robert died in an aeroplane crash. Since then, the remaining twin has turned into a heartless tycoon. Oh, that gave me a new hint. Yeah, about their brother. Didn't know that. You are responsible for your daughter's many injuries and scars, Carolyn. You brutalize her, don't you? How could I abuse my own flesh and blood? This is nonsense. It would be like hurting myself. You really believe you've done nothing wrong, don't you? How long has this been going on for? I should have seen it when you were my patients. Seen what? Child abuse? Are you mad, Dr. Reed? I dedicated my whole life to my precious Carol. She is a part of me. Yes. Even her name is just a part of yours. This is a terrible tragedy. Something of an unknown disorder. My God. Abuse that comes from overwhelming love. I can't believe what? what I'm hearing. How dare you say something like that? What kind of a monster do you think I am? I don't understand what's happening. Um, okay, first thing, I don't understand the limits of my vampire power. Like, I'm using some sort of a vampire power, obviously, when I use these blue options. You get that little effect of like the screen changing and then Jonathan talks all serious. Like, tell me about blah blah blah. Does that compel people to tell the truth? I'm like I'm pretty sure it does, otherwise what would be the point of it? I've used it to compel people to let me inside of their homes before. So I'm gonna assume that it forces people to tell the truth. In which case, if they honestly believe they haven't abused their daughter, then what I mean, that's just straight-up delusional. They have. They obviously have. And what, and what the hell did Jonathan mean by some disorder about overwhelming love? What the hell are you going on about, Jonathan? Speak to me, Carolyn. Why do you behave like this? How does it make you feel to hurt Carol before cajoling her? I... I don't know. It makes me feel good to take care of my daughter. I need to feel useful. No one ever takes care of me. I need someone to take care of me. Do you realize Carol is a person? Not a toy. Not a doll. The poor girl would put her hand in a flame to please you. You are both trapped in this toxic relationship. Carol and I are perfectly happy. Leave us be. How stupid I was to believe you could be a suitable husband. You're a threat to Carol, and no child should feel unsafe in the presence of their parents. No, Dr. Reed. You are the threat. You are threatening to separate a mother from her only daughter, from the meaning of her life. I've been wondering where this has been going, and I think the answer is it's going nowhere. Carol's gratitude is exemplary. She seems determined never to leave you. I'm taking care of my daughter as well as I can. It's not always easy, but she's the best gift life gave me. But she'll probably leave you someday to live her own life. Will that be difficult for you? Why would she leave? Children sometimes stay with their parents until the end, for they know no one else will love them as much. Yeah, this is this is going nowhere, isn't it? Well, hold on, let's go talk with Carol. Goodbye for now, Miss Price. Dr. Reed, I am glad to see you again. <laughs> they didn't change that line for after you have that conversation. They obviously would not say that to me anymore. Good evening, young- My mother always prefer- Is there anything new with you? You need to understand you are in danger, Carol. 
Your mother is responsible for all your injuries. That's a lie. She has always taken good care of me. She only gets irritated when I get under her feet. It's my fault. My mum loves me so much. Yes, Carol. Your mother believes she loves you as much as you're convinced she loves you. But you are both trapped in a toxic relationship that puts you in danger. What are you saying? That she lied to me all these years? That she wants me to be miserable? My mother has dedicated her life to my safety. Your mother claims she cares for you, but you're just a vessel for her disease. I even suspect she doesn't see you as a person, but only as a part of herself. Stop that. How dare you? There was no need for you to return from that stupid war if it's only to make us suffer. Hmm. Well, now there's definitely nothing that's going to come from this. That's it, isn't it? Goodbye, Carol. Good morning. Uh, I hope evening, you can stay sir. a little longer this time. Wow, this whole thing is just real bad, isn't it? Oh, it's real bad. Right. Um, there's a whole heap of problems going on here. One obvious one that we're just seeing, that we keep seeing right now. Kind of small, but really... Uh, definitely, Dr. Reed, I am glad to see you again. Definitely immersion ruining is that. They didn't change those lines, even though they both obviously completely hate my guts now. They would certainly not be happy to see me. This quest goes nowhere? I'm pretty sure even if I hadn't failed that hint with Carol, uh, I'm almost certain I still couldn't have really done anything to help the situation, okay? Like, yeah, tell the mother you're abusing your daughter, tell the daughter, hey, your mother's abusing you. Uh, okay, that doesn't really solve anything. Like, the main thing that I could do here, based on the tools the game has given me, is uh, it wants me to, I think, basically judge the, the mother and say, you know, if I really want to take them out of the situation, then I should kill them, embrace them. That's like, like the main way you deal with stuff in this game when it comes to people's personal relationships. Get the hints, rack up the XP, and then kill them, which is really quite a weird system. And this, I think, especially highlights how weird that system is, because that doesn't fit all situations, or even most. That doesn't really solve much of anything. In this case, it solves nothing. Well, I guess that's not true. Their mother wouldn't be there to abuse them anymore if I killed their mother, but also they're a kid, so who's gonna take care of them? You can't just... <laughs> I can't just come into the situation, go, their mother's abusing them, kill her mother, and then just walk away and never come back, right? That solves a problem but it makes a whole new one who's gonna take care of the kid right like i need there needs to be something i can actually do tell the kid like hey i know this person that might be able to help you or <laughs> i've got <laughs> dr reed has an entire mansion that is now empty for everybody empty completely except for the uh caretaker i could tell them hey why don't you go live at my mansion until we i don't know until we find you somewhere else to go or until you come of age and move out or whatever. Dr. Reed has a whole fucking mansion, could tell them that, could find somebody that they know, like that person that uh, used to be nice to them. Was that the creepy poet? I don't know if we'd want them to move in with the creepy poet, but you know, something that actually sort of solves the situation, gives them a path forwards in their life where they can not only be away from their mother, but also in an environment where they can actually have a life. Killing their mother and running away doesn't do that. So like, the game doesn't even give me the tools to really do anything here. It's so weird and awkward. Put me in this situation where I gotta, you know, I mean, any reasonable empathetic person would want to help the daughter, right? I mean, she's being fucking abused by her mother. But then, then they don't actually give me the tools to really truly help her in any meaningful way. And then you got the immersion ruining stuff, like the lines going on after the fact, and I whatever nonsense Jonathan was jabbering about about they're abusing their daughter because they love them too much or something? I don't know what the fuck Jonathan was trying to say, but this whole quest line is just garbage. Yeah, invisible wall. That was terrible. Everything about that was bad. I'm gonna purge that from my memory. Um, Alright, we're supposed to meet him, meet somebody here for the main quest. Enter Loisius Dawson's mansion. Where is it exactly? 
Oh, I came in from the wrong way. So this is Eloisius Dawson Mansion. <laughs> Such a creepy, ominous place. Am I ever going to come out of this place? Dawson's mansion. Here I am at last. But the question remains. Am I ready to make a dying man my progeny? No. I don't care about the fact that they're dying. I care about the fact that they're Aloysius Dawson. The tyrannical tycoon asshole. Yeah, so apparently I can... Uh, apparently this is a split. It said I could either follow Lord Redgave's order, or go with what Lady Ashbury said. That is, make sure that they die a, uh, natural death before I need to turn them into a vampire. Therefore, I can be excused from not biting them, because they're dead. Obviously, I'm going to choose the letter. Oh, that looks delicious. Normally I would cut all this wandering around mostly just looking for loot, but since this is a very new area, and particularly regal in an expensive mansion, I want to show you the whole thing. It looks pretty different from the other mansions we've been in. So fucking rich. Also gotta check if any of my father's secret letters have been planted here. You never know. upstairs first. God, I don't even know where I'm supposed to go or oh, okay they're downstairs so yeah let's hang out upstairs. Old suits of armor. Execution of John Francis Sparrow. John Francis Sparrow, 21, has been hung this morning in the prison of Pentonville, a miss, uh, in the prison of Pentonville. Mr. Sparrow was sentenced to death after being found guilty of the murder of his sister, Alexandra Sparrow. Until the end, the man claimed he was innocent. No formal proof of his presence at the crime scene was ever brought to the court, but he has been sentenced to death and executed anyway. Scotland Yard refused to reopen the case despite the many holes in the chain of events which ended with the death of Miss Sparrow. Charles Albright, who conducted the en inquiry for Scotland Yard, refused to answer any of our questions, but three weeks ago he was demoted without any official explanation. What a strange way to reward an efficient inquiry. Efficient is one word for it. Set up is another. This better be a hint for Charles Albright. That's the detective dude, right? That we've spoken with around the uh, around the temple. Reduced in rank for falsely accusing a man of murder. I wonder what Inspector Albright thinks about his punishment. Yes, I want to speak with him about that, since they executed a person who was not guilty. Ooh, they have a picture of my father. It's locked. God, I'm always teased by things like this. That book totally looks like a readable thing, doesn't it? But it's not. There's Aloysius. Behind the screen. Mm -hmm. 
super want to make sure I don't miss anything in here. Especially readable, collectible things that I might need for extra hints. Because whatever happens in here, I got a feeling I might need to leave in a hurry and won't be able to come back. What's up, fucker? Finally you're here, Dr. Reed. What took you so long? I had to pass several of your barricades and outposts to access your mansion, sir. Death, pestilence surround us, and time is against me. I see you've gathered some of the most expensive, albeit experimental, blood transfusion equipment available. All this could be so useful in a hospital. Yes, yes. Since Lord Redgrave sent me a doctor to perform my conversion, I thought you might find some of these devices useful. Most thoughtful. But tonight I'm not here as a physician. But I feel reassured that a specialist such as yourself would help me to escape the Reaper. Very well. But before I proceed, I have a few questions for you. If you must, but be quick, for I don't have much time left in this life. First of all, I need to be sure that you know exactly what is going to happen to you, sir. I can assure you I'm as informed as any man can be. I have planned for this moment, Dr. Reed. Planned very carefully. Is my strategy to talk them to death? They said, make it quick, I don't have much time left. If I just talk to them for an hour, are they just going to die of old age or whatever? Sir, so I'm going to end your life. Do you not wish to discuss the procedure for even a minute? I don't have a minute to indulge in idle chatter. I can't feel my legs and the cold. So cold. Is that is that actually the strategy, I wonder? That would actually be hilarious if it was. <laughs> I will become your maker. Do you understand what that means? Well, I certainly won't consider you my liege or some such drivel. You can be assured of that. You'll need to feed on warm blood. Blood from mortals. How do you feel about that? I'm rich, Dr. Reed, and powerful. I'm sure I'll be able to acquire all the blood I need without ever having to sully my own hands. What do you know about the Guard of Prewen? What I do know is that I'll crush anyone or anything that would dare to oppose me. Let's move on then. Please, I'm cold and tired. I feel my life waning with every moment. But first, before you embrace immortality, what would you do with such a gift? That's a rather impertinent question, Dr. Reed. And I will do as I please. Answer me all the same. What will your first action be as an immortal? To save London. I will finance the most efficient quarantine ever seen. I will build a wall that will separate the sick boroughs from the healthy ones. Who gave you the right to decide the fate of thousands of people? My money. My money and my pending immortality gives me the needed authority, Doctor. I'm a businessman. I'm used to tough decisions. I gotta think that this is one of those decisions where the vast majority of players are probably gonna choose to kill him, right? I mean, like, nobody's gonna like this prick. That makes me a little bit curious what would happen if you did actually make them your progeny. I'm not going to do it, of course, but I'm curious. You really plan to build a quarantine wall across London? Yes. It will be tall and strong, separating the wheat from the chaff. By doing so, you will also create two separate prisons. Come, sir. An eminent doctor like yourself knows that such radical measures have proved efficient in the past. Let me guess. You mean to isolate the rich from the poor? This is a desperate measure for desperate times. England must prevail, Doctor, no matter the cost. Quarantine is not a bad idea, medically speaking. But I'm convinced this epidemic will not be contained by mere walls. 
As long as the right people are on the right side of the wall, that's all that matters. What if a new outbreak happens inside your walls? You'll have created a giant trap. That won't happen. As long as we dispose of anyone that is contaminated as soon as they are spotted. But you can't guarantee infection will not spread. Just one contagious carrier would be enough to create an apocalypse. The apocalypse is already knocking at the gate. We must be strong now! I've heard enough. It's time to proceed. At last! All right, do what you have to do. If it hurts, so be it. I've been preparing such a long time for this. Oh. Once again, there was a third option. I think I w there was a third option that I was missing when I decided what to do with Dorothy Crane, I think. I wonder what I could have done to get that. I talked with so many people about Aloysius. It's also interesting that you sacrifice XP by making them a vampire. Anyway, I am going to bite you. But to kill you, not to turn you into a vampire. But... I don't know, I'm just kind of worried because isn't that how I accidentally turned Mary into a vampire? Is just by biting them? What if that happens again? Eh, well, whatever, no choice. This is definitely what I'm going with. You don't deserve immortality, Mr. Dawson. What? What are you prattling on about? I don't believe I've ever met a man so bereft of empathy. You, sir, are despicable. No! Wait! You can't! I made a deal with Lord Redgrave. I'll finance whatever he wants. Please, just ask him. Sleep now. Rest now. Forever. <laughs> I would have lived forever. Who are you to decide my fate? Who gave you the authority? Fuck you. Mesmer is level five. First, first key. Second key, what? Third key, what are these for? district will soon suffer the consequences of your action. I don't feel bad about this at all. However, I thought I was supposed to make them die of natural causes a little bit more non-obviously. You know, just like a poison or something. I mean, I bit their fucking neck. Isn't it going to be pretty obvious that I'm the one who did this? I was sent to their house. Me, a vampire. And instead of turning them, they're dead because a vampire bit them on the neck. I'm kind of suspect number one, don't you think? Well, that was the third key. Treatment for fatigue, anemia. Bunch of treatments, nice, all right. There's gotta be two other locked things in this house. Second key. Rich blood sample, more blood samples, tons of blood samples. All right, I can make a bunch of serums from that. And final one, 500 shillings. You'd think there'd be more money for someone who's so incredibly rich. I mean, that's a decent amount, but I think it'd be thousands. Oh, hi, Redgrave. Um, I just showed up. Uh, it seems a vampire has assassinated Aloysius. Is it done, Dr. Reed? Is Aloysius Dawson reborn as expected? Alas, Aloysius Dawson was not brought back to life after his death. The man is gone. What? What happened? Ah, so I'm presented with a choice. Tell them that I purposely killed them, or lie and say that I didn't survive the procedure. God, what would happen if I told them the truth? Surely they would try to kill me. Did not survive the procedure is a lot more plausible, isn't it? 
it's a little bit strange that they have a bite on their neck. I really think I should have killed them by some other means. Poison, most likely. But, I mean, this is known to happen. Not surviving the procedures. It's totally plausible. I want to tell them the truth just for curiosity's sake, but I know in character that doesn't make any sense, so... He didn't survive the procedure. He was too weak. This is unacceptable, nevertheless. You were given the simplest task. Well, get rid of me then. From now on, you're an outcast. Banished. You are forbidden to ever appear in front of us again. Ascalon will smite you on sight, and your heart will be thrown to the rats. I'll leave you then. Have fun with your puppets and shadow plays, Lord Redgrave. Yes, go, traitor, and take that awful creature, that counterfeit of a woman I saw waiting for you, and be gone! Interesting. And by the sword you die, talk with old Bridget. I was really thinking we were going to try to keep um, the Ascalon Club and Redgrave on our side longer, and that this was going to be some clever plot to like poison them to death or something, make it look like an accident. But no, it seems like you're kind of railroaded into either make them your progeny, and you're good with the Ascalon Club and Redgrave, or if you don't, there's no way around it, they just banish you anyway. Whoa, old Bridget is here. What? What are you doing topside? We meet again at the strangest of times, young Ekon. So do you serve the Earl of Bristol now? Old Bridget? What are you doing here? Your friend, the wise Ekon. She sent me to warn you. Did anyone see you? It's a long way from the dock sewers, and hunters are patrolling the streets here. Who said I took the streets? How do you think I survived for centuries in this city without ever being seen? I know all her secrets. How did you meet Lady Ashbury? She came to us in the sewers in search of answers. Just as you did. What kind of answers did you give her? I knew nothing of your maker, but we talked. We talked a lot. Her words and ideas are captivating. It is no surprise that you like her. I like her too. Lady Ashbury? You know her? Tell me what's going on. The lady approached me but a few nights ago, wanting to meet the sewer skulls. Once she questioned Harriet Jones, she agreed to help us. Harriet Jones is still with you then? How is she doing? Harriet remains angry but is recovering slowly. Her mind is twisted, but at least her body is healing. Tell me what is going on. The lady asked us to keep an eye on your mortal doctor friend while you were away. We spotted the hunters. They were discussing plans to attack tonight. Ah. Uh, uh, yeah, no time, no time to lose, really. No time to lose, then. I must go there right away. I shall return to my den. Have you a message for the lady? Should I see her before you? Um... Uh... Apparently we're, yeah, super, super in love, even though we barely know each other. <laughs> sure. Yes. Tell her I love her. Is this still unknown to her? Go now and take care, young Ekon, for the flames are rising. Reach the Pembroke Hospital. This feels like we're reaching the end of the game and I don't have a chance. To, like, I feel like if I go to the hospital, that's going to be the end and I won't have a chance to do other stuff. I don't know if that's actually true, though. It sort of feels like it, though, and I've still got some... Side quest stuff to do. Still to find out why my father left me. Why did you do it, Dad? You fucking weirdo. Hiding messages all over the city. Anyway, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. 
And when I return, I'm going to head to Pembroke and defend it.